Hey, welcome to the Relentless Positivity Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Martin. I'm excited today because I got, I got one of my own today, a fellow fitness professional in here. So my guest is Brad Williams, and he's an experienced fitness professional, been in the game for a while. And he's also the host of Over 40 Fitness Hacks podcast. That's a great show if you guys need to check it out. If you're like myself, you're over 40, you need some hacks. <laughs> the game changes. So uh, <laughs> He's going to share some tips to help us fight the aging process, but we're also still going to have a social life. We don't have to get too lame as we get older. So Brad, thanks for coming on the show, man. Yeah, thanks so much, Joe, for having me on. This is great. Absolutely, man. Like I said, I love talking to my own. It's good to good to get into this. So let's let's take it back. So uh, where did you grow up? What kind of kid were you growing up? Yeah, so I grew up here in uh, California, Central California. I don't know if anyone knows Fresno is the easiest place to to reference. And uh, grew up there, kind of farmland life. Um, and then uh, dad was a doctor, mom was a nurse. So I was always kind of health conscious and down that path and real into sports. And kind of just eventually came down here to Southern California, the Long Beach State, graduated with a business uh, administration major. And, you know, always knew I wanted to have my own business, just didn't know what I wanted to do. And, you know, after various jobs and still obviously training and and doing sports and all that kind of stuff, I was like, well, this is your passion. Why don't you just go for this? And I had some good mentors and my brother and I opened up our first spot in Huntington Beach uh, 13 years ago. And uh, just ever since then, it's just been a rocky, rocky ride of entrepreneurship, of moving spaces, moving heavy equipment, you know, got some investors that wanted me to go big and got a couple uh, other spots. You know, we were chatting before the the show about uh, had an all women's gym for a while. And, you know, that was a pretty uh, hard endeavor. And uh, and just doing business in California is just not the greatest and and hard and then southern california is just for fitness is just mega competition so you know you can't i always tell people you can't learn this stuff in in school you just have to jump in and uh you know hopefully have some investors don't use too much of your own money yeah (laughs) man i was uh, i was uh, was a fitness guy and never thought I'd own a business in a million years. So you, you did the smart way. Cause if you're going to run a business, you should probably know about business. I had a business minor, um, didn't pay attention. Just thought I just needed to keep my student loans at the time. And, uh, but the people that are succeed- successful usually are the ones that actually know how business works, not fitness you know, on the other side. So you did it the right way. Yeah. I just wish I, you probably would have done a few years first as a personal trainer, working the grind and, and doing all that. And I was real into marketing versus just, jumping in day one with a brick and mortar spot and that heavy rent. So <laughs> probably if, you know, everyone can go back in time, but uh, yeah, just eventually uh, uh, through, you know, California competition. Uh, at one point I had a company that was trying to buy me out right before COVID and they got wiped out because of COVID. We got hurt because of COVID and we pretty, pretty much dwindled down from three gyms to one gym. Um, and uh, now just more, you know, focusing on the online side um, just like you were mentioning, you you do it as well. Pretty, sure. pretty much all of us had to lateral over. And so, you know, the, my whole career in fitness has always just been, you know, real niche with the over 40 crowd. And then thus I became 40 myself. And I started realizing, oh, my God, all my clients when I was in, you know, my early 30s and, you know, yelling at them to, you know, you need to eat better and work more and do more steps and all this. And lo and behold, I get there and I'm like, Oh crap. They are right. Yeah. <laughs> it's way Man, harder. I want to go back and apologize when I first came yeah. out of college. I'm sorry. I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know. It's just the, this is fighting the aging process. It's a losing yeah. battle, but you know, I refuse to quit. So my mindset is, you know, whatever we can do and tips and tricks, or I call them hacks to yeah. just give yourself the, the best chance to, you know, I'm not trying to be a, professional bodybuilder anymore just you know i just want to be fit healthy look good feel good but you know i also want to have my social life i'm unwilling to give that up just most of my audience are unwilling so these are the things i've found that have worked for the over 40 crowd so that's kind of the theme of my business now oh, it's a great niche man because the game it does change you know people used oh, yeah. to always tell me oh you wait till you i was like no way man i've worked out my whole life pretty much i'm, I'm doing they're doing the right things about 38, it started happening for me. So I don't know if I'm, I'm ahead of my age a little bit, but yeah, things, things change, man. So is that, have you found yourself that you become a better trainer as you've got into your forties? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, just being in the game ex- with experience and, you know, I've had over 60 trainers, independent trainers going through all my gyms and, you know, always open to new ideas and new styles and trained with them. So, I mean, it's just wealth of knowledge just from experience wise and, you know, just through my podcast too, just meeting people around the world, all different professionals and every category and everyone thinks a slightly different way and has a slightly different tweak to everything and I just absorb it all. So I think just, just that being 40 myself, just like you, I think about 35 was when I 
started having my first couple ankle rolls and knee knee problems playing sports and i've never had that before and you start seeing your body's starting to give a little so you gotta be a little more careful and start worrying more about functional training balance and uh, just injury prevention you know i don't i don't do anywhere near the amount of weights i used to do i do more time under tension slow moving stuff and and you know start incorporating pilates into my into my game as well i did some yesterday with my wife man that was tough (laughs) <laughs> it was tough, yeah. man. Great core yeah, workout. But see, so you kind of mentioned you've kind of changed some things up. What are some more special considerations you think about with the over 40 and I don't know, for us, the late 30s? Yeah. So for, for like training wise, you know, like I just mentioned, time under tension, just taking things a lot more slow. You know, it's people have different names for it. Time under tension, doing negatives or doing holds like you would in yoga, but just just slowing down like a like a simple squat. To where you know it takes five or ten seconds to go all the way down and then you do the same thing coming back up you could do that with any exercise mm-hmm. so you're just focusing on more mind body connection quality reps and that way you can use lighter weight and still get the same hormonal response of you know building lean muscle tissue not just as heavy as you can go for you know 10 reps yeah you know for strength it was awesome but you know over 40 my, my whole thing is I mean, if you really want it, we'll train that way and you know, we'll be safe while we do it. But my theory is, you know, if you're not getting paid to be a million dollar professional athlete, what are you doing? You're just tearing up your body and we're here. We're in here for the long game. You know, human beings are making it to 100. No problem. Now, as a healthy individual, what's your body going to be like, though? You know, <laughs> yeah. your ligaments, your skeletal system, all that. So you got to you got to play it safe. So just, you know, doing time under tension type stuff and then. uh also, I've always done incorporated a lot of balance training. So using BOSU balls, balance discs, and then doing balance and motions real huge too. So doing like walking lunges where you turn and look or twist your body and look. And uh, a lot of people aren't used to that kind of stuff. And yeah, I mean, usually they're balance is one of those things, man. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. So absolutely, yeah. if, you don't, if you're not using it, because people are like, man, I used to be this, do it'll do this, no problem. Well, it used to be, you know, you do more stuff on one leg and walking around and playing sports. Now you you walk to the office or walk around the house. You know, it's not the same. You got to work on that stuff. Yeah, and and you know, it's not too late to ever try. Like obviously, yeah. if you're just you're a, a sixty or seventy year old, and I'll get clients like that and they'll start out and yeah, we're barely doing anything. I'm holding their arm and everything. And, you know, three months later, they're without me. And six months later, they're doing like the BOSU ball or even flipped on the other side where it's a lot harder. Yeah. And, you know, we've got all the different equipment or people can buy it off Amazon, you know, just the sky's the limit on that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just huge because for the, you know, the over 60 crowd, you know, the slips, trips and falls, those are the biggest things to worry about. And yeah, you know, you could be as fit as you want, but you take a spill. Sorry, your body's just, it's not going to heal the same way. It's going to take longer and your body's atrophying while you're waiting for your body to heal. So the name of the game is don't fall, don't get hurt as best you can. And, you know, those are the things we practice and, and train for. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one thing about COVID that I've talked to my clients about is, hey, this is, I, it's nice if you want to fit into your skinny jeans and all these other things, but man, building your immunity, you know, preventing all these falls that you talk about and just living healthy longer, not just living just to live. Right. But you want to be healthy and vibrant as long as you can and not doing these things, these short-term diets and these crazy workouts to just make get short-term results. But what, what, look, what does that look like on the other end? Yeah. Hey, you know, another thing too, I've, I've had a, uh, it was a freak lower back injury <clears throat> where I was, you know, being the gym owner, I'm sure for yourself too, we're the accountant, we're the bathroom cleaners, we're the marketing team, the website developers, you know, everything and moving heavy equipment, you know, safely as possible was part of the gig and just, you know, did a freak accident where I was ho- holding a 40 pound rack, tripped on an eye bolt in the ground that we had our battle ropes on. And usually we have a cone over it. Just didn't think I needed it while I was just moving a couple items into my truck, lunged out held on to it that balance that i just talked about came into play i pride myself on it caught myself and held the 40 pound rack for some reason and blew out my l5s1 right there Oh man! so over the last four years dealing with that eventually had to do surgery but uh just also part of life experiences and just i think i grew stronger and you know knowledge of just how to protect your lower back and train for it and a lot of decompression type exercises and you know, I feel like I'm back to 98%. There's just that little, little bit left that's always there that I think will always be there yeah. from nerve damage. But, you know, now I just think it made me a better trainer because that's all I think about for my my clients is protecting Absolutely. that lower back. Hey, 
and until you've hurt your lower back, you don't you know. Just don't know. You just don't know what you don't know, right, man? When that lower back goes, it affects everything in your life. Yeah. So, man, that's great. That's I've done the same thing when I've I've had injuries or things that have happened to me. I'm like, well, I guess I need to pass this on. You know, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm in this 100 percent all the time, and I'm still getting hurt doing these things. And uh, what are my clients who I might see someone who hadn't worked out in 20 years? What, how's that going to affect them? So, yeah, that, your life experience is definitely kind of shoot over so speaking of life experiences let's talk about your podcast a little bit so you you have a ton of awesome tips on there you've had some amazing guests but i wanted you i asked you if you could bring like kind of your top five hacks for people over 40 if you could bring those in yeah so uh kind of you know one of the biggest ones i don't know what your feelings are on like fasting but that fasting has been absolute game changer at least for me to like to keep the kind of the figure i want in my lifestyle you know i like going to sports bars on week on weekends and have a little bit of fun and all that kind of stuff. And then I bam back to the grind on Monday and you pay for it. But, uh, you know, starting out with like intermittent fasting, you know, that's the whole concept of, you know, you've got your, hopefully your macros and everything you want to eat for the day and all your protein and everything, but you just crunch it down into a shorter time window. Yeah. Um, for girls, you know, there's some hormonal issues with that. So you have to check with your doctor, but, for the most part, everyone should be good if you get if you get the green light um, to just start crunching it down, you know, closer to an eight hour time window for guys. We can kind of go down to a six or a five and uh, just not changing anything and just adding that rule to my lifestyle, just seeing great results from it. Yeah. And, you know, I never had to do that, obviously, as a 20, 30 year old. But now it's, you know, our body, it's part of the aging process. It holds on to fat longer because it's a survival uh, mechanism. But this is a little thing that gives us just a little bit of an edge. Um, and then started moving into more longer fasting where I'd go, you know, uh, 24 hour fast or 36 hour fast and just started, uh, dabbling with 48 hour fast. And I think that's wow. kind of probably the limit I'll go. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, just, just, you know, seeing my blood work and my cholesterol drop and everything just gives your body a chance to like reset itself, yeah, detox itself. It. Sure. And that's, that's also a, a big thing of mine has been, you know, learning how to detox know clearing out your liver and organs and everything and uh been having like a, a morning detox drink where i put a little bit of apple cider vinegar black pepper cayenne turmeric and i think some lemon juice Man, just to uh, wake you up right there that'll wake you up real fast too and then you know also stops you from having too much coffee in the morning too because after something like that you're like oh okay I'll just, i can barely even sip on this coffee <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's that's like one of my number one ones. And um, other than that, number two we talked about was like time under tension, just more yeah. quality reps. And you, it doesn't take that much to, you know, get that hormonal response to, ble- to, to bring that lean muscle mass yeah. back. Yeah, if you're listening um, right now, just grab you like a 10-pound weight and do about five reps of five seconds down, five seconds up. And let me know what you think. Let me know how your legs are feeling. Yeah. It, doesn't sound like it, much, does it? No. And then, you know, if you have the capability of like, you know, there's those in-body machines that'll test how much lean muscle and body fat and water weight you have and that kind of stuff, just switch your program up a little bit and go test. And you might be surprised like, oh my God, I'm doing less and, you know, doing more time under tension. And my lean muscle was, is increasing. Yeah. And your joints feel a lot better too. That's all. And that's the main thing is, you know, our ligaments don't really repair over time. You know, our muscle does and bone can, but ligaments are once those are shot, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're pretty much done. Um, and then uh, uh, potassium is a big one. Mm-hmm. And I actually uh, learned a lot from a guest I had on my podcast, Tim Kelly. Um, and he wrote a, a nutrition book. And uh, it re- part of it was like tracking your micros, not just your macros. So macros, you know, your protein, fats, and carbs. But your micros, like your calcium, your your uh, potassium, magnesium, you, you know, all your vitamin C's and and, and and such. And a cool website that I, I'll give your audience, it's called uh, eatthismuch.com. Hmm. And the reason I found that one is because, you know, using MyFitnessPal and some of these other trackers, they don't sometimes even have like those micros in it because they don't, yeah. they don't need it yeah. or they don't, they don't care about it. So going to that website, it literally will tell you every single macro and micro of every single food on this planet. Wow. And how it changes when it's cooked, because there is a difference. Interesting, yeah. And then, you know, build yourself a chart and, you know, just Google the RDAs. It's a good place to start with and safe um, and just see where you are. And you and the biggest thing was that I was challenged with is, you know, see where your potassiums 
compared to your uh, sodium because it's supposed to be a two to one ratio potassium to sodium. And it was actually flipped the other way. And I always okay. prodded myself on, you know, keeping salt and in, in, in check and all that. And oh my God, it was way over. My potassium was way under. And since doing that switch, it just pushes water weight out. It looks your, your makes your muscles more dense because the water in your body actually gets into the cell, not out of the cell. Where that's where you get that little, that, you know, the pudgy look, and you just workouts start feeling better. So that's that's one of my other ones, and that's I've good. never that's had good. anyone. You taught me something, man. That's cool. I'm gonna have to look into that. Yeah, and I've never had someone that came in the other way like, no, my tap- potassium is great. I hit, I hit it. <laughs> it's like I've never seen it yet. <laughs> I think it's impossible with the American diet and just how everything is processed. And sure, yeah. That's cool, man. I'm going to look that up. Yeah. Um, and then what else do I got? Uh, oh, just, uh, you know, te- you know, the whole theory of like having a, you know, more alkaline state of your body being a better pH, you know, from all the studies I've seen, it's supposed to be around, you know, seven to 7.4 where our body functions the best, you know, the whole theory of cancer surviving and more acidic conditions and you know it's just being in an acidic condition is not great for your organs anyways but uh, a way to check that is just you know go get some ph saliva test strips and uh, not only can you test your saliva and see where you are on that scale and it always comes with like a chart um, but you can also start testing your water you know the whole importance of drinking you know enough water and you know each each month i kind of reassess what i'm drinking and i'll find oh man i'm you know i'm short on water as i got to get my game back on on there but actually testing the quality of your water as well yeah you know hopefully you're drinking cleaner water and more mountain spring waters and he's like one of the best but also put a ph test strip in there um and you'll be surprised that some bottled waters even though it's alkaline and you know it's got that mountain spring thing part of it and you test it and it's acidic And that's because, you know, it may have gone in uh, with a good pH, but over time, things change. So that bottled water may not be the best source. So that's something to to play around with for your audience. Yeah, that's a cool tip too, man. Yeah, that's something I don't don't test. You know, I got my little filtered water. I haven't been testing it, though. I got to look into it. Yeah, you know, and uh, I I started, uh, because of that, I started ordering uh, water from uh, Sparklets. They had like a mountain spring water source that, uh, that my guests recommended and, you know, tastes better it's clean and every now and then i'll just test it to see if i got a, a bad one and it's never it's always perfect you know right at the 7.2 or or whatever it is on that perfect scale so oh, cool what was that sparklet you said uh sparklets okay yeah that's that water delivery service and then they have the mountain spring water version which is the the little bit more quality a little bit more price here but nice yeah. So let me, let me ask you this. So let's yeah. say there's, there's someone, they're in their forties, they haven't really been exercising or eating right. And they just feel lost and they don't know where to start. Man, what, what would you say? What was the first step you'd tell them? Where would they start? The first, the first, the first steps I always tell people is they, they need to get like kind of the mindset going. So, you know, doing their own, instead of just running into a, a personal trainer like us or going into a boot camp class, you know, you got to, you got to get your mind right first. That's so, so important because it's just like in, in like hypnosis. They always tell you that if someone wants to change a habit, they can't help that person unless they want that change. Not because everyone else wants them to get that change. It won't work. And it, it's very helpful to us too. If that person just starts getting into it, starts, you know, doing their own research, you know, whether it's on Google or listening to podcasts or reading books um, and then start gathering information. And then, yeah, obviously with a personal trainer or online coach, we've been doing this a lot longer. So we already, you know, you can read as much as you want, but you're, you're behind the game by 20 years. Yeah. So if you have that capability of getting a little bit of help from us, it's, it's good because you'll get a little more um, precision point, uh, you know, training programs, but also it's just, it's more of two of an accountability. Like even trainers need trainers. Sure. You know, I have a place I go to just, it's fun. It gets me away from my gym mm-hmm. and I've got my own trainers there. Yeah. I might know more than them, but it's still the accountability factor is huge. Yeah. So that's, you know, kind of that's the steps would be, you know, do get, get, get yourself going, get walking, do some push ups, and then start increasing your program and then finding the accountability partner. I think yeah. that's, that's real huge. Accountability is so important. Yeah. You know, like I said, there's like every day, I'd say seven days out of the week, you may feel like working out one day, one of those days, most of the day, you're just going to have to just show up and just let the magic happen. You know, that's what I tell yep. my clients. Hey, just show up. If you'll just show up, the magic will happen. But if you're by yourself, 
nobody knows when you quit, then you're more likely to quit. So having that partner or group or a trainer, whatever it is, the accountability is absolute key for sure. Yeah. And then uh, the other part too is, you know, someone gets into that New Year's mindset. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. They come to one of us or they go start doing their own program. That's fine too. But then they want to do everything all at once. Uh, that's the worst way. It's just building habits. It needs to be one little thing. Pick one thing that you think yeah. is the most important for you at that time. You master that one thing. Then after a month, you add one more thing. And, you know, if it takes slower, it takes slower. But to go that approach of I'm going to start running every day, three miles. I'm working out seven days a week. I'm going to have the perfect nutrition, have all these supplements. And it's just this are the way the human works. It's you'll just burn out. You'll quit everything. Yeah. And there'll be months to a year before you start again. So it needs yeah. to be very just, you know, I promise I'm going to walk every day, just at least a mile. Boom. Do that for a couple of months. Don't change anything else. So everything's got to be in steps. That's so it's such a good way to do it. And that's how I coach as well. It's, I mean, you just, you just start laying them on, like you said, because it's we're, human nature. Like you said, we're, we're going to quit because this is too much. It's overwhelming. You, you can't keep that pace up. So make it sustainable, make it a habit and then move on. That's great. Yeah. And, you know, even, even with, um, I'm finding that that whole system goes into play with like your business, like right now doing podcasting, you know, I kind of already knew, okay, let's just put out this many episodes on my podcast per week. I promise that I'll do that. And I did that for a year. Okay. So now I'm going to start working on a website and I'll work on it a little bit once per week type thing. Cause I know if I start doing everything, I'll quit the, the whole process. Yeah. And I haven't even started doing social media. I hate doing social media. I'd rather do blog posts and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I know if I just do everything, I'll quit everything. But I love, you know, I love what I, the the education and meeting people around the world that I'm doing right now. So I don't ever want to quit this. But I also got to take this in steps. You know, I've, I have time. I don't, I don't need to rush anything. Yeah, you got to practice what you preach, right? Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Exactly. It's amazing. The advice I give other people, I'm like, huh, I should probably listen to that myself, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, we got to stare, stare at ourselves in the mirror a little bit longer, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's but, it. So, uh, man, you, you mentioned the podcast. People got to go check it out. You, you, these are just a few of the tips he had. There are so many good tips on there. He has amazing guests. I got to get tips on how you get so much such good guests on that, man. But yeah, so, absolutely. Get that, get that a check. It's over 40 fitness hacks. I'm going to put the link in the show notes. What, what's another good way for people to keep up with what all you got going on? Uh, just my website, um, over40fitnesshacks.com, and it's four zero, not spelled out. And I have some of my contact information in there. They can join the email uh, list. And uh, I'm also at Twitter at over 40 fit hacks is my uh, sign in. But, uh, you know, you know, the website's probably the best way to get a hold of everything and where okay. you can listen to the podcast and show and get a hold of me. Cool. Yeah. Go on there. And, and maybe you want to do some online training with Brad. You like the, you like his style. You like the way he goes about things. And he's got a wealth of knowledge. He's been in this game for a long time. And he's been hey, the, the benefit of doing a podcast is you get to soak in all the knowledge from all these experts around the world. So he's got that going around there. So if that's what if you're over 40, and you want to train with someone online that specializes in that. Brad's your guy, man. Check him out. Go to his website. I'm gonna link that in show notes as well. Hey, Brad, thanks. Thanks so much for coming on, man. I really enjoyed this. And you taught me a few things as well. No, that's awesome, Joe. Thanks. For, thank you so much for having me on. I can't wait to get you on my, my show as well. It's awesome. Oh, yeah, I feel the yeah, same way. Yeah. It would be an honor, man. Hey, if you're listening right now and you already did the, the squat thing earlier, that your homework, uh, time and attention, I uh, share this episode. There's somebody that needs to hear Brad's message today. Get out there and spread the word about over 40. It's not over. You know, it's just getting started when you get to your 40s in there. So spread that message, spread the positivity, and we'll see you guys next week.